Hello there, world developers, uh, and welcome to this live class 120 with a little bit of delay, but we are here. So today we are going to be seeing how to create a ROS2 program and deploy it into a real robot. So let's go for it. Alright, so hello there everybody, sorry for this uh, delay, we've got some technical issues here with the live stream, as you have uh, seen. So now we are in the correct one, we are in the correct live stream, so let's go for it. Then, as always, welcome everybody, let me try to see if everything is fine here. Okay, I can see Engineering Nations, Alberto Cruz also. Lakshmi, okay, so it seems that everybody is uh, here. Okay, then let's go for it. So I'm not going to lose any more time. So as always, we are going to be working on the construct. So let me very quickly change here my screen. There we go. And let me see if we have everything fine. So in the live classes, we should have the live class for today, which actually it, it has been updated. Okay, great. So uh, we have everything uh, correct. Then remember that in order to access to the project for today's live class, you have to first come to the construct. As always, in case you already have an account, just log in. In case you don't have a, an account, please just create an account. It's going to take you a few seconds and it's completely free. Once you are logged in, you have to come here to the left menu and come to the live classes section. You have it here, the third one. First one, uh, we have uh, courses, learning paths, and live classes. The third section here inside the Robot Ignite Academy. And you are going to see the current stream. So this is the stream that we are doing right now for this live class. And you're going to see here in the top right corner of the page, this uh, light blue button, which says fork and open the class project. Okay, this is the option that we want to go for. Okay, so what we want to do is to click on this button here. And this is going to automatically create a copy of the project and Okay, so I'm having a problem here. Let me. Okay, so all of you, you have to click here and wait until your project is open. It in my case, let me just very quickly fix one thing. Right. Give me just one second. Okay. Okay, I think I have it, I have solved it. Let me very quickly check it. 
There we go. Okay, so now I am being able to open it. So as you can see, we have the new layout, which, which was introduced some weeks ago. You have the live stream here. You can uh, visualize it directly here. You can, in case you don't like this, you can minimize it. You can, of course, open it and put it into a new tab, if you prefer it like this, to see it bigger, whatever uh, you prefer. And you have also the option here to visualize the chat of the streaming. So I'm going to do this right now in order to read your comments. Yeah, so I am hearing myself lower now, which it's, it, it's not very nice. There we go, let me mute this. Okay, trying to do this recipe here. Uh, hi, it's all quiet, hello. You can see Marco there. Yeah, so uh, now I am able to read you, as you can see, I have the chat here. So let me know if uh, you have been able to copy and open the Rojdek properly, as I have uh, shown you right now. So are you are you uh, here in the same point as I am with the Rojdek loaded here? Let me know in the, in the chat so that I can know if Everything is fine so that I can keep going. Don, I can see here G6, Jer, he, he or she, I don't know, uh, is done. Yes, Roger Gloated, also Engineering Nations. Okay, so it looks that like everything is uh, working fine. Then uh, let's keep going. So let's keep moving. So um, yeah. Here, as you, as you can see, I have the Jupyter Notebook, as always, of today's live class. We are going to uh, be working today with ROS2. In fact, it's going to be a little bit of uh, ROS2 combined with ROS1, but you, we will see it while we progress. So, yes, it is loaded, so it's also Rabehi. Great. Okay, so today we are going to, uh, first of all, we are going to create a ROS2 program, a quite simple, let's say, uh, uh, yeah, simple ROS2 program in order to control a mobile robot. Okay, we are going to be working with the Robox simulation. So the, the goal of today is to first create a ROS2 program and test it in a simulated environment. And then once we see that the program is working as expected, we are going to deploy this ROS2 program, ROS2 algorithm, into a real mobile robot, as uh, the title uh, says and describes. So we are going to first create this ROS2 algorithm and test it into a simulated environment in Gazebo, and then we are going to deploy this algorithm into a real mobile robot, in this case the Tatrabot 3, using our real robot lab. All right? So this is the, the path that we are going to be following today. Then, first of all, as always, we are going to be working with the simulation, all right? Then in order to start the simulation, we have the steps here. Then let's start by this. So first of all, let me put this into a side. And uh, we are going to start by opening a new shell. Yeah, you have the, all the steps here indicated. So in order to open a new web shell, you have to click on this first icon that we have in the, in the bottom left corner of the page, which says web shell. Then by clicking here, we are going to open a brand new web shell. As you can see, this is our, our regular uh, Linux shell where you can type regular commands like you know, ls, uh, cd, whatever. Yeah, so this is our regular Linux shell. Then inside this web shell, we are going to execute the following two commands. What I'm going to do in order to, to do it faster is to directly copy and paste the commands from the notebook into my web shell. So this way I don't have to, to write letter by letter all the commands. So I'm going to come here to my notebook. I'm going to select the command and I'm going to copy it. 
In this case, I'm using Control C, which is the shortcut. And in order to paste it, Control V. And here I have directly copied the command from my notebook to my web shop. Then I can just execute it like this. And the next command is the ROS launch command, which is the one that actually is going to start the simulation. So let me execute it. And now I'm going to explain a little bit. So, so yeah, basically, uh, okay. So basically here, what we are doing is to source the simulation workspace, which is the workspace where I have placed all the simulation or the gazebo related packages. Then you can see this workspace by coming here to the code editor. The code editor is the second icon that we have here starting from the left. The first one is the web shell and the second one is the code editor. If we click here, we are going to open the integrated development environment, the IDE, which is going to allow us to manage all our files in a graphical way, which is always uh, nicer than doing it from the web shell. Then here we are going to see different workspaces. Uh, in today's live class, we are going to basically only uh, focus on this one, on the ROS2 workspace, which is the workspace meant for creating here all the ROS2 packages. So here basically is where we are going to be working today in this ROS2 workspace, but we can see here that we have also the this simulation workspace, which basically only contains contains some packages related to the Tartarbot 3 simulation, as you can see here, which is the simulation that we are going to be working with. All right, then let me come back here. So here in this uh, first web shell, I executed this ROS launch command, ROS launch real robot lab main launch. Here I have uh, started my simulation. Then in order to visualize it, because now the simulation is actually running, but I am not uh, seeing it. So I am not able to visualize it. Then in order to visualize the simulation, I have to open the gazebo window, which I have here. Is this cube icon that we have here. So if we click in this one, we are going to open a gazebo window, which is going to allow us to visualize our simulation. Then uh, at first, when you open the when you open the the gazebo window, you are going to see all this in gray. Okay then uh, what you have to do is to zoom out. So basically you're, we are seeing all this screen in gray because it's, um, it has a lot of zoom into the simulation. So we need to zoom out of the simulation. In my case is with the, is, is with the mouse wheel. Let me get away here. Actually, let's also reload. Okay, yeah, so my first Rare Robot Lab session has finished and I have been disconnected. Unfortunately, let me open this again. So I have my, I had my simulation closed. So here is where I can check my uh, Real Robot bookings. I have booked um, all these hours for me so that I can test now. And the first session has just finished. So basically it has closed all my web shells and unfortunately it has closed my simulation, but no, no, no big deal. I can just relaunch it like this. So let me repeat the commands and I'm going to relaunch it. There we go. And uh, let me minimize this and open again the gazebo window here. And actually here, let me try to, um, let me see if I can somehow unzoom in a faster way. No, it doesn't look like. Okay. so.
I'm zooming out, but I think it's not working. Okay, so I can seem to find the simulation. Are you being able to find the simulation, guys? Let me try to... Okay. Let me actually try it one more time. Yes, it is visible. Yes, sim is working. Yes, all you have to do is to zoom out. But for some reason here, I am not being able to do it. Let me let me uh, try to do it one more time. Yeah, yeah, zooming out is going to work. Let me try this one more time. Okay, let me see. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Here I have it. All right. Um, great, so here we have the simulation, as you can see, then you're going to see something like this, okay? Mm. Let me rotate it a, li a little bit so that you can see it. So basically, uh, this, is, this is the simulation which is based in our real robot ladder, uh, lab. So let me show it uh, real quick to you. Here, we have the real robot lab which is basically a 24-7 lab, lab that you can use in order to connect to a real robot and test your algorithms here in a real environment, all right? In this case, we have a Tetrabot 3 currently, which is the robot that we have here, which can work both in ROS1 and ROS2. So it's available uh, for uh, testing programs in ROS1 Noetic and also in ROS2 Foxy. All right, and basically, as you can see, this is a quite uh, small environment with uh, some roads here, some traffic signals, etc., so that you can test some basic uh, navigation algorithms. All right, this is basically the purpose. You can you can also test some uh, more complex algorithms like deep learning in order to detect all the traffic signs, etc. In any case, as you can see. Here, we are seeing the live environment. So this is a, a live camera that we have here, and we are seeing uh, right now what is going on here in our lab, all right? So here, as you can see, this is a, basically, this is a, a, a copy, a copy of the real environment, in this case, simulated, so that we can test here in the Gazebo simulated environment, we can test our algorithms and our programs first in this simulated environment, and once we know that they work, we can then move them and test them into the real robot. All right, this is always the recommended way to work. So first, create and test your programs in a simulated environment, and then once you have tested them, and you have tested that they work properly, then and only then move these uh, programs to the real robot and the real environment. Yeah, this is going to, for instance, uh, it's going to avoid trouble like uh, crushing your robot, etc., uh, etc. Et All right. Then, okay. So everybody has loaded the simulation, as I have seen here in the chat. Then the next step is going to be to create our program. So. Let me go for it. Here we have the simulation. All right. Oh, yeah. I was forgetting about this. So uh, the title for this class, for this live class, is Deploy ROS2 Algorithms. All right? But so far, so far, 
we have not used any ROS to command, right? So, uh, so far, we have launched the simulation using a ROS launch command, which is a ROS1 command. Yeah, the equivalent in ROS2 to ROS launch is ROS2 launch. So, at this point, we have only been using ROS1 commands, and we have launched, we have started a simulation, this one, which is based in ROS1, right? So where does it come ROS2 here? Okay, then for this, we are going to use the ROS1, the ROS1 bridge, okay? So uh, until this point, we have only been able to develop this uh, simulation in ROS1. We are going to develop it and port it to ROS2, but uh, at this point, we only have it available in ROS1. Therefore, what we are going to do is to launch the simulation in ROS1, as, as we have just done, and then we are going to use the ROS1 bridge. This ROS1 bridge 2 is going to allow us to communicate with the topics in ROS1. Yeah, it's, it's going to create a kind of bridge, let's say, between ROS1 and ROS2. So, Despite we have our simulation running in ROS1, we are going to be able to create a program in ROS2 which is going to communicate with this ROS1 simulation. Yeah? Does this make sense? Did you already know what ROS1 bridge was? Or is this the first time you are seeing it? You already know it? Probably, yes. I think I have already used it in previous live classes. So, at least it should ring a bell. Then, all right. Then, in order to launch this uh, Rosram bridge, we have to execute the following commands. All right, we have them here. So, let me very quickly open here a new shell and copy and paste these commands source bash rc bridge first of all and then run this command yeah so first of all we are sourcing this uh, file bash rc underscore bridge here uh, you we can have a look if you want at, at, at this file it's not that complicated Bisher C bridge. Sorry, Cathy, no, it's cat. Here we get you can see the contents. So basically we are first sourcing Noetic, ROS Noetic, which is ROS1. We are then sourcing ROS2 Foxy. And then we are uh, sourcing other workspaces that uh, are meaningful for this connection that we are going to be working with today, like uh, the ROS2 Sims workspace the Kakin workspace and the ROS2 workspace, which I mentioned it before, it's this one, which is where we are going to be placing our ROS2 programs, etc. So basically here what we are doing is to source all the workspaces, either ROS1 or ROS2, that we are going to be working with. Yeah? Sorry. Then once I have sourced this file, I can run the following command, ROS2 run, ROS1 bridge, dynamic bridge, and I put there this argument bridge all topics. Basically, I want to generate a bridge for all the topics of the simulation. Then I execute this command, and this is going to start, as you can see, creating all the connections. Yeah, so we can see, uh, for instance, here, uh, ROS bridge, passing messages from ROS, uh, Lock messages, here we are passing image messages, camera related messages. <coughs> Sorry. There we go. Yeah, so basically here we can see how all the connections create two to one bridge for services. Here we are creating all the bridges for the different services. Here we are creating bridges for the topics. As you can see, the topic ROS out, topic scan, topic uh, TF, TF static, etc., etc. 
All right? So with this command, we have created all the connections. And now, if I open a new shell here, and let's say that, for instance, I source Ross Foxy. There we go. So I source Ross Foxy. Then I can now execute a Ross2 topic list command. And I am able to visualize all the topics from the ROS1 simulation, which, uh, by the way, it's showing this error. Don't worry about it. It's not important. So I can visualize from ROS2 using ROS2 commands. I can communicate and, for instance, in this case, get a list of all the topics which are running in this ROS1 simulation. All right? Then uh, we have seen right now that the bridge is working. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. We, we have launched the ROS bridge. And uh, so first step, let's just uh, summarize what we have done until, until this point. First of all, we have launched the simulation. In this case, the simulation is based in ROS1, in ROS1 Noetic. Next step, we have launched the ROS one bridge node in order to allow accessibility from ROS2 into this ROS1 simulation. Yeah, so we have launched the ROS1 simulation, we have launched the ROS1 bridge so that we can access ROS1 topics from ROS2. So the next step at this point is to create our ROS2 program. ROS2 program, which is going to interact with this simulation. Then, I'm going to use, for instance, this shell here, which I have already sourced for ROS2. Source opt ROS foxy setup dot bash, and I'm going to create here a ROS2 package. We have you have also the command here. So I'm going to copy directly from uh, the notebook and paste it here into my web shell. ROS2 package create the name of the package, which is lab test, the build type, which is going to be Python. I'm in Python. And, the, and as dependency, I'm passing only RCLPy. So, let me, oops, by the way, I have just done a mistake because, so can somebody tell me what, what is the mistake I have just done here? Here, here, when executing this this command here, this ROS2 package create, here I have done a mistake. Can somebody tell me in the chat which is this mistake? I'm reading you here. Somebody knows. Yes, no, yes, no. Started in the wrong folder. CD to SRCD. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. I can see that you are there paying attention. Okay, yeah. So I have created the package um, here, which makes no sense. Let me remove it. And I'm going to go inside the Rust to workspace to the src folder in this case, all right? ROS2 workspace src folder, which is empty at this moment, as you can see. And then here is where I'm going to create my lab tests package. So let me repeat here the command. There we go. Now it's correct, okay? So if I come here to the code editor and I open the ROS2 workspace and I go inside the src folder, I'm going to see this lab tests package that I have just created here. All right, then let's keep going. Okay, so now I'm going to create my Python script. So in Python packages like this one, this is a, this is a Python package. Can somebody tell me also in the chat? Let's see if you can answer. Why do I know just, just by looking at the structure of this package? here in the code editor, 
I can already tell that this is a Python package and not a, a C++ or a CMake package. Can somebody tell me why? How can you differentiate just by looking at this package structure between a Python package and a C++ package in ROS2? No CMIG file. Very well, Lakshmi, very well. So first of all, we can see that it doesn't have any CMake uh, file, this package, right? The C++ packages or CMake packages are going to contain always this uh, very uh, type uh, in ROS CMake lists.txt file, yeah? For instance, if we come here to the simulation workspace, we have some ROS1 packages. And uh, let's open uh, this one, for instance. See, we have here this CMake list TXT files. Yeah, this uh, in ROS1, this file, uh, super important. It's contained in all the packages, etc., etc. In ROS2, as you can see here, we don't have it. Instead of this CMake list TXT file, what we have is this setup.py. See, setup.py. This is the equivalent, let's say, in Python to the cmakelist.txt file. All right? Also, very important, uh, we have when we have created our package here in the command, we have specified it as build type amend python instead of amend cmake. Okay? And uh, yeah, the one of the most characteristic things, sorry, is this uh, is that uh, this Python package doesn't contain a CMake list file? Instead, is it has this setup.py file and setup cfg. All right, the package XML file, by the way, it's common for both packages, C++ and Python packages. Okay, then in Python packages, we are going to place our Python script here inside the lab tests folder. Yeah, so inside this, we have the first lab tests folder, and inside we have a second lab test folder which contains this init file. So inside this one is where we are going to place our Python script. In this case, I'm going to name it uh, movement.py. Okay? Movement.py. We are going to place it here inside this folder alongside this init.py. All right? Then I'm going to paste inside this new Python script. I'm going to select all the code here from the notebook. I have it here. I'm going to select all these, copy it, and paste it here into my script. Okay? So remember, we have, you have all the instructions here. Everything that I am doing, you can follow it here in the notebook. And here, you can see all the contents of this new Python script that I have just created, this movement.py. Okay, you have all the code here. So, of course, uh, I don't uh, suggest that you try to write this script line by line here in the code editor. Uh, that That's not a, a good idea for sure. So, uh, what I suggest you is that you come here to the notebook and you select all this code and you, you can just copy it and paste it directly here from the notebook to the code editor. All right? Then, um, okay, let's, let's first uh, finish creating our package and compiling it and then later we are going to have a quick look at the, at the script. So, another important thing in ROS2 is that Python packages or Python programs need to be compiled. So in, 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 in ROS1, Python packages didn't need to be compiled. In ROS2, they do need to be compiled. And we need to generate an executable from the Python script. So here we have created a Python uh, script, but uh, we are not finished yet. We need to generate an executable 
from our Python script. And in order to do so, we need to modify here the setup.py file. This uh, setup.py file, which we said a moment ago that it's kind of the equivalent to the cmakelist.txt uh, file in C++ packages. So we, he we have to modify uh, this file and specifically we need to add a line here in the entry points console scripts. So we have the line here. You can copy it directly as well from the notebook and paste it into the code editor. So this is what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to copy all this line here and I'm going to paste it here inside the console scripts, inside these um, brackets here. There we go. Then what does this mean? Well, this is the name that I'm going to give to my executable node. Yeah, so the executable that I'm going to generate from my Python program is going to be named like this, my underscore node. Then this executable is going to be generated from what? From the main function, which is defined inside the movement.py script. Yeah, you see it? Here I have the movement.py script. And if I come here, down here, I have a main function defined. All right? Then my executable is going to be, my executable, which is going to be named my underscore node, is going to be generated from the main function, which is inside the movement.py program, which is inside the lab tests folder. All right? So this is the meaning of this line. This is the name that I'm, you are going to, to give to your executable node. This is the folder that contains your program. This is the name of your program. And this is the uh, main function. All right, then, uh, okay, then we are ready. At this point, we can uh, already compile. So let's come here. And in order to compile, remember that we need to go to the root of the workspace. Yes, in this case, it's home user ROS2 workspace. Then here, we can run the Qualcomm build command. And this is going to compile our package and generate the executable. There we go. Very important also after compiling is to source our workspace. There we go. Okay, then, uh, uh, yeah, so at this point we have already created our program and we have generated an executable, an executable from our Python program. Then let's have a quick look uh, now at this point at our program and let's see what we should expect from it. So you're going to see that it's pretty simple, uh, not a big deal. Also, you are going to see that it's not perfect. Of course, this program uh, has a lot of ways of improving it. In fact, you should try it to improve, improve this program yourself. We, we will see it after uh, in a moment. Then uh, let's uh, now try to review part by part this uh, code and let's try to, to figure out what it's going to, to do. Then first of all, as always, we can see some imports here. We are importing some modules, messages, as well as you can see here, laser scan message, odometry, twist message. All right, then we have the class definition, the robot control class in this case, which is going to inherit from the node class. Then in the constructor of our class, we are defining some elements. Specifically, we are defining two subscribers and one publisher. Yeah, re remember, all this is uh, ROS2 code, yeah? ROS2 uh, Python code. So here, as you can see, we are using the create subscription function and the create publisher function then we are creating uh, two subscribers, one for the odom topic 
and another one for the scan topic. So I'm going to be reading odometry data and I'm going to be reading scan data, which is basically the laser data. Okay, I'm going to be reading and analyzing data that I'm going to be uh, getting from the laser of the robot. All right? And I am creating also a publisher right here, which is going to publish into the command bell topic. So uh, remember that usually this command bell topic is used in order to send velocity commands to the wheels of the robot, in order to move it. All right? So we, I'm also defining here some messages like uh, the twist message, the laser message, and the dometry message. And I'm also initializing here some variables uh, like roll pitch yaw that I'm going to be using later. Then first thing I can find here is the odom callback. So my subscriber, when I define my subscriber for the dometry topic, I am assigning a callback to this uh, subscriber. In this case, it's this odom callback. So that every time a new message is published here into the odom topic, this callback is going to be triggered. Then basically here what I am doing is to get the pose information of the robot, the orientation in this case of my robot, and I am converting this orientation into Euler angles. Yeah, in ROS and also in ROS2, orientations, orientations are uh, given in quaternions, yeah? This is uh, the same in ROS2 and in ROS1. So if you have uh, some experience in ROS1, you already know about this. So uh, in ROS, in either both ROS1 and ROS2, orientations are given in quaternions. Then in order to be uh, more uh, easy to understand and to work with, what we are doing here basically is to get the orientation of our robot and we are using a function here. We are using this function Euler from quaternion, which basically is going to take the quaternion that we are uh, passing to the function and is going to convert it to Euler, which is this roll, pitch, and yaw angles, which are much more um, easy to understand for us. All right, then you have uh, the details of this function uh, here. At the end, here you have it, Euler from Quaternion. All right, I'm not going to enter into details about this function. You can check it if you want, if you are interested in, interested on it. Just keep in mind that uh, what we are doing here is just to convert this orientation from Quaternions to Euler angles. All right, then we have also the scan callback function, which basically what I am doing is to get the laser readings and I'm storing, the, storing all this data into a variable into an attribute in this case in this case of the of my class which is this laser message yeah i'm getting the this message which contains all the laser data and i'm saving this data into this laser underscore message variable okay then i okay one more time my real robot lab session has finished so i was kick it don't panic don't worry, don't worry, no problem at all. So basically my simulation probably has been stopped, right? Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to need to start it one more time. I'm going to do it right now. Let me do it real quick. Uh, where, where it is, here it is. Okay, so let me copy this, paste it, start simulation there we go let me open again gazebo here here we are let's zoom out the simulation there we go there we go I also need to start again the bridge there we go in order to establish all the connections for the topics there we go and finally 
I'm going to source the worst to worst piece, which is the worst piece where I have created my program, right? The program that we were just analyzing. Then uh, let's keep going. Let me open my program again. Here we have it. Okay, so we were analyzing. Uh, yeah, so we were here in the get from laser and get laser full. Th these are just uh, support functions. As you can see here, what I am doing is to get the laser reading, reading, which is equivalent to the front of the robot. Yeah. So our robot, if we zoom, uh, as you can see, it has the laser mounted here in the top chases here and this laser is providing uh, data with a, uh, a scope of 360 degrees yeah so in this case what we are doing with this with this function get from laser is that we are only getting the information which corresponds to the front of the robot all right in this case the front of the robot is if i'm not wrong it's uh, in that direction there, I think it is. Yeah. So basically, here in this function get from laser, get from laser, I'm getting the data related to the front, the laser data uh, related to the front of the robot. Here, I am just getting the full data. For instance, I'm getting all the values of the of the laser. I have another function here in order to stop the robot. Stop robot, as you can see. We are setting the velocities to zero and we are publishing the message to the command bell topic. So this is going to stop the robot. We have the move straight function, which basically is going to move the robot forward at this velocity, specify it here in the linear X. And we have this function rotate, which basically, as you can see, is going to rotate the robot a certain amount of degrees depending on the, on the value we pass to this uh, function, right? Again, I'm not going to go into details about uh, what is this, uh, how all this is calculated, just basic maths, all right? Then we have the Euler from quaternion function, which I have already explained before. And finally, we have the main function. Then the main function, the logic, the main logic of this program is very simple. So we are creating uh, an object of our class of the robot control class that we have right here. We create an object and then we have a main loop, which is this one, which is going to keep executing while RCLPy is okay. What does this mean? Well, while my program uh, is not stopped, for instance, let's say that by me pressing control C in the keyboard, while I not stop my program this is going to keep executing. Then what I am doing is to get the readings from the front of the laser, as you can see. And then I am checking this value. And meanwhile, while this value is higher, well, in this case, while this value is not lower than 0 0.5, I'm going to keep moving the robot forward, okay? then when this value, when the front laser value gets lower than 0 0.5, I'm going to stop the robot and rotate. Okay? So basically, let's come here to the simulation. So basically, what this program is going to do is that it's going to keep moving the robot forward in this direction, let's say. Let me... Yes, so it's going to keep moving the robot forward in this direction. Then once the front laser readings detect an obstacle which is closer than 0 0.5 meters, then I'm going to stop the robot and I'm going to turn the robot so that I don't crash against this obstacle. Okay, and then I'm going to be keep going. So let me, let me, let me uh, execute it real quick here. Uh, let's see how it works. So let's make sure that we have the simulation running here. We have the ROS1 bridge node running here. So let me run the program here. ROS to run. Uh, lab tests. My node. So 
let me execute here and let's see how this okay yeah uh, at some um, sometimes when you execute the program you're going to get an error like this uh, don't worry just run again your program okay now it, it doesn't want to work let me execute it one more time okay I don't know why okay there we go yeah so the uh, the robot starts to move forward as you can see here I can see the readings from the front of the laser oh actually there is there is uh, something wrong here let me stop it let me stop it there is one important point here I'm going to stop the program uh, right there let me do one thing Let me reset everything very quickly. Okay, there we go. Let me come back here to my program. Then there's one interesting thing here that um, I have not explained it, and it's now the moment to explain it. So as you could see, my Turtlebot robot here was moving forward, but the laser readings were getting uh, we're increasing the distance, which makes not no sense, right? So, in theory, as my robot is moving forward and is approaching this wall here, these readings should get lower, right? So this, why do you think this could be happening? This that we were seeing. So I was moving my robot forward in this direction here, but the readings were increasing instead of lowering. Why do you think this 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 could be happening? See, it starts uh, in one dot zero, and it's increasing here. Why would you think this is happening? Does somebody have an idea or? Going in driver's direction. Yeah, that's an option. Yeah, 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 right. That's an, that, that's a, that's an explanation, a possible ex explanation that we are going in reverse direction. The other explanation the laser reading should be from zero instead of 180. Yeah, that's it. Laser is getting data from back wall instead of front wall. That's it, that's it. So Andrew and Margo uh, have the correct answer. So basically the problem here is that instead of getting the data from the front of the robot, we are getting the data from the back of the robot. So that's why it is increasing, right? Then what we can do here in order to... Uh, to change this is to come to our program and uh, here in the get front laser function which is the function that we are using to get this data we can come here to this function and instead of using the this data the data in the 180 position of the ranges array what I'm going to do is to use instead sorry what I'm going to do is to use here instead if i can there we go this one yeah which is the opposite data so now i should be getting the data which is uh, from the front of the robot so let me recompile remember i have done a, modi a modification to my program i have modified my program so i need to compile it again in order to generate a new executable right so I need to compile again. I'm not going to be able to compile here. Of course, I need to go inside Rust to Workspace and now compile here. 
There we go. <clears throat> so I compile again my package, I source it, and now I'm going to execute it. Let me check that everything is still running. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and then let me try to run it one more time. There we go. Let's see now if it works as a spec. Okay, I'm getting this uh, index out of range error. Let me run it one more time. Yeah, I'm getting all the time this error now. There we go. Okay. So um, we can see now that the robot is moving forward and the distance now it is actually getting lower. So this makes more sense. Then once this distance gets uh, below 0 0.5, the robot should stop and rotate. So let's see if this happens. When this value gets uh, lower than 0 0.5, it's getting close now. 0 0.5, now. Okay, so now we can see that the robot has stopped and it's rotating. There we go. It's rotating to the right. And now it's going to keep going. Once it finishes the rotation, the robot is going to keep going. Again, it should keep going again. There it goes. Finish the rotation. And now it starts again moving forward until this distance gets lower than 0 out of 5. And then it's going to stop and rotate again. Okay? Yeah, makes sense. So here we have been able to see the more or less the logic of the program. So let me at this point stop it. Um, let me stop everything here. There we go. Okay, so we have been able to, to see here the main logic of the program, which is super simple, as you can see. Then once that we have uh, once we have seen now that this uh, works more or less we are going to test it into the real robot. So let me do this right now. Then I'm going to stop everything at this point. Let me stop everything. And I'm going to connect to the real robot. Since we are going to be working now with the real robot, of course, we uh, don't need the simulation anymore. We are not going to be working with the simulation. Now we are going to move on to the real robot. So let me close all this. And at this point, I am going to connect to the real robot. In order to connect to the real robot, all I have to do is to come here to this uh, robot face that we have here. And as you can see here, I can see my time left, which, which are 15 minutes. And then I can click here in, in this button here, turn on off. Then by clicking here, I am going to connect to the real robot. So right now the connection is being generated. I'm going to wait a little bit because it takes uh, some seconds to create all the connections. Usually the shells are going to get reloaded. Now I am not seeing this behavior, so I'm going to just wait a little bit. So now I am now that I am connected. Let me minimize this. Um, if I can, I think I can. Let me minimize it for a moment. So, as you as uh, as you can see, we have also this icon here, which says "Real Robot Lab Streaming." So if you click on this icon in the real Robot Lab Streaming, you are going to be able to visualize also here the live streaming of the real robot. Here we have it. So this is the live streaming. As you can see, uh, I am connected right now. So the session is assigned to me. Okay, and here I have the robot. So, first of all, in order to verify that the connection has been made with the real robot, what I'm going to do is to open a shell and 
I'm going to run a ROS topic list command, and I can see that the connection has been has been made. Okay, then um, in the real robot, well, right now as you can see, I have executed this ROS topic list command, which is based in ROS one. So I am seeing right now the topics in ROS one. However, my program is written in ROS two, right? That's why. Uh, when we were working with the simulation, we had to use the ROS1 bridge. Remember that we use it, we launched it, this uh, ROS1 ROS bridge, remember? Okay, so when working with the real robot, as you can see here in this note that I have added here to the notebook, this step is not required when working with the real robot. When working with the real robot, this ROS1 bridge is already executed for you. All right? So you don't need to execute this ROS1 bridge when working with the real robot. This step is only re required when working with the simulation. Okay? So remember this. When working with the real robot, the ROS1 bridge is already started for you. So you don't need to execute it. In my case, However, I'm going to run it, okay? So that you can see it, uh, you can see all the steps. Then in my case, I'm going to run it. So let me do it right now. I'm going to do it in a new shell, in fact. So very quickly, let me run it here. I'm going to start it. I'm going to start the bridge here. There we go. Here, all the connections are being generated. And now, set up the, I am sourcing ROS2 Foxy. And now, if I run a ROS2 topic list here, I am able to visualize the topics from ROS2. Okay? So now I am ready to execute and test my program, okay? However, there's one thing here. Mm, it's the worst space, let me come here. In our program that we should update because in the, um, in the real environment here, in this case, in the simulation that I am using and in the real environment, the lasers are opposite. That's why I have both of them here. So in the simulation, the front laser corresponds to the zero position of the ranges array. But, but in the real robot, in the real robot, the front of the laser corresponds to the zero position of the ranges array. So I'm going to switch this option here in my code. And I'm going to use now the 180th position in order to detect the front of the laser, okay? So let me save this program. I'm going to also recompile it in order to generate a new executable. Where do I have my live stream? Here I have it. Let me put it here. There we go. Source. And I'm going to run it right now. So, ROS2 run lab tests and my node. Okay, there we go. So, let me run my program. And it's going to take some time. So, uh, there is some delay between the live stream. And the connection, here we can see how I am starting to receive the, the laser readings. We can see here how the robot is starting to move forward, the real robot. And once this laser position reaches, it goes below the value of 0 0.5, remember that the robot should stop and it should rotate. So let's see if the behavior is as expected here. It has gone below 0 0.5. So now it should stop and 
we can see there it has stopped and now it's starting to rotate there we go it is rotating and it looks like it's kind of stuck there for some reason it's kind of stuck there but well basically we have seen that uh, the behavior it has been as expected yeah here it has finished the rotation and now it's going to start moving forward again there we have it so there it keeps moving forward until it finds the next wall this value goes below 0 0.5 and then it's going to start the rotation again yeah so there we go so we have been uh, able so this as you can see this is live right now this is the real robot so we have seen that uh, we have created a ROS2 program for the simulated environment we have tested this ROS2 program in the simulated environment and we are we have now just deployed this program and we have executed it into the real robot yeah and the program behaves uh, more or less the same yeah so at this point many more tests could be done um, in order to improve the the, the program etc however I can see now that the, the life has stopped for some reason. There, there it goes. There it is rotating. Okay, so let me right now stop all this. I'm going to stop these programs. And let me open again the chat here so that I can find the chat. No, I don't want the test. reason let me try to see it here okay here i can see your chat uh, lakshmi is saying real robot link is not available in my project and um, yeah that's right because you don't have a reservation done so this is uh, these two icons are showing for me because i am currently now in a session as you can see i have six minutes left then in order to have a section is very uh, easy i have added all the steps here in the notebook at the bottom at the end of the notebook we have all the steps here in order to book a session but basically let me show it very quickly you have to come here in the menu to the real robot lab and then here you are going to click on the book a session you are select you are going to select one of the robots currently we only have the turtle 3 as you can see then you are going to select if you prefer ross one <coughs> sorry if you prefer ROS1 or ROS2 you can select it you are going to select which time you want to to book etc and once you uh, have booked at your time you are going to see your bookings here available okay it's very easy then uh, once you once you are working on a project and you have a um, book at a time, then you are going to be able to see these icons here and you are going to be able to turn on the uh, real robot connection. All right? So that's why uh, you are not able to see this because this is only visible for the people who is currently in a session, in a real robot lab session. All right? So um, I try to develop uh, what programs is not available. Ross one and Ross two can coexist, right? Say as Martin Novila, yes, they can coexist. In fact, in this live class, you have seen that we have been uh, running in the same project Ross one commands like this Ross topic list and uh, ROS2 commands, yeah? So all in the same project. So yes, ROS1 and ROS2, they can coexist. So um, yeah, basically that's all for today's live class. Uh, 20 minutes late already, but we have started late. We got some problems at the beginning. So, so I think it's fair that uh, I have taken some more time. Let me switch here to my, to my camera already. There we go. All right, so 
So yeah, uh, thank you very much for being here uh, with me. Sorry for the delay at the beginning and the trouble. We had some problems setting up the this live stream, but hopefully we were able to to fix it on time. Uh, we have been able to do this live class, and uh, at the end everything has gone uh, well. So I hope you have enjoyed this live class. I hope you have learned something new, and I hope that uh, I have encouraged you to try this, to create uh, your ROS2 programs. To You can use this one uh, that uh, I have shared with you in, in, in the live class, do some modifications, improve it, and book your sessions in the Real Robot Lab, book the sessions yourself, and test uh, your programs yourself in the Real Robot. So, so yeah, go for it. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's all for today's live class. Thank you very much. I'm going to see you next Tuesday in next live class. And until then, as always, take care and keep pushing your ROS learning. Bye bye. What are you doing, Alberto? I'm training this intern with ROS. Oof. Did you have the same experience? Spending too much time equipping your team with ROS skills? Check out our ROS Online training solution for enterprises, a fast and easy way to empower your team with ROS. From ROS basics to manipulation, perception, AI, ROS2, everything your team needs to learn is here. Practice with real and simulated robots. Train your team by doing from day one. Also, our ROS experts will provide you one hour of consulting services to boost your robotics projects. Want to become a happy Alberto? Request a demo today.